Hey guys, uh, I thought you, this is, I don't even, I'm losing count how many episodes. Uh, this is how to make certain things like self-rising flour. Um, if you, you know, if you don't have so access to self-rising flour, you can make your own. Now how you do this is you take one cup of flour, a half a teaspoon of salt, and a half a teaspoon of baking flour, a baking powder, and mix it all up really good. That is self-rising flour. That's all it is. Okay. Um, to uh, make your own baking powder from McCormick's cream of tartar, take a half a teaspoon of cream of tartar, a quarter teaspoon of baking soda, and a quarter teaspoon of corn starch. Mix that all up, and uh, that makes baking powder. Okay. Uh, if you don't have cornstarch, then increase the baking soda to a third of a teaspoon. Okay, this is from Grandpappy's Basic Recipes. Okay, mayonnaise. Okay, how to make mayonnaise? There's uh, two different recipes here, but you take two egg yolks, two cups of salad oil an eighth of a teaspoon of cayenne, a teaspoon of dry mustard, and three tablespoons of lemon juice. You mix the egg yolks with the dry mustard and cayenne, stir in the lemon juice, beat in a half a cup of salad oil a few drops at a time, then beat in another half cup of oil more rapidly. And I guess you just whip it until it's mayonnaise. Um, this mayonnaise on this other recipe is three eggs, one cup of cream, a half a cup of sugar, a half a teaspoon of mustard, a half a tablespoon of vinegar, and a half a teaspoon of salt. You beat the eggs, you add, uh, add the cream, sugar, and mustard. It takes three eggs, one cup cream, yeah. Uh, mix well. Very gradually add the vinegar. Cook in a double boiler until thick. Do not boil. Add salt after the mixture cools. Now to make baby formula, Okay, uh, using uh, your powdered milk, you would take six tablespoons of non-fat dry milk, two tablespoons of olive or vegetable oil, one cup of water, safe water or boiled, and one teaspoon of sugar. Mix well, serve at room temperature or slightly warmed. You know, test it you know, first to make sure it's not too hot for the baby to drink. Now that is one way to make a homemade baby formula. And in an SHTF situation, you guys may need to know how to do that because what if somebody gives birth and they die? You got a baby to feed. Or this person gives birth and doesn't have milk or can't nurse the baby or refuses to nurse the baby. That could happen too. So. Uh, so you need to know how to make formula. Um, if there's no baby bottles available, feed baby using a spoon or a sterile eyedropper or a sterile medicine dropper. Uh, caution, do not use corn syrup or honey instead of sugar. They both contain a potential bacteria which can kill a young baby who does not have a full de fully developed immune system. Okay, the next one is an electrolyte beverage, kind of like Gatorade or Pedialyte. You take one quart of water, a half a teaspoon of baking soda, one teaspoon of light salt, and six to ten teaspoons of sugar. Okay, an optional ingredient, package of Kool-Aid for coloring and flavoring, mix well. It replaces lost electro electrolytes due to dehydration from diarrhea, vomiting, excessive sweating, etc. Okay. Now, to make your own peanut butter, you take one cup of roasted shelled peanuts, a half, one and a half teaspoon of oil, and a quarter teaspoon of salt. Uh, note, omit, omit the salt if you're using salted peanuts, okay? Note, the oil may be peanut oil or olive oil or vegetable oil. The flavor of the oil will not be present in the finished peanut butter. Note, if you have fresh, unroasted peanuts, then remove the peanuts from the shells, rub off and discard that 
that thin paper uh, coating on the peanut. Place the peanuts on a cookie sheet and roast in an oven at 300 degrees Fahrenheit for 12 minutes. Allow the peanuts to cool before using. Now here's the directions. Place the roasted peanuts, the oil, and the salt in a blender and secure the lid. Blend it until the mixture becomes spreadable. If necessary, add a few more drops of oil. If necessary, stop the blender and scrape the mixture off the sides of the blender to the bottom of the blender and then continue blending. Use the peanut butter immediately or store it in an airtight container in the fridge. If the oil separates during storage and rises to the top of the mixture, then stir it back into the peanut butter before using. Option for crunchy peanut butter, stir in 1 8 cup of chopped roasted peanuts after you've blended. Okay, this was from uh, www.grandpappy.info slash indexrec.html for more basic recipes. Okay. Now another another oral rehydration solution, um, like an electrolyte, right? is take a table salt, a half a teaspoon of table salt, a half a teaspoon of salt substitute, a half a teaspoon of baking soda, and two tablespoons of table sugar, and one liter of tap water or purified water, depending on what the deal is. Um, one liter is one quart and two tablespoons, okay? Uh, chill can be served with a fresh lemon in it. You can also mix crystal light or sugar-free Kool-Aid. Don't use regular Kool-Aid as it takes extra sugar that can worsen diarrhea. Note, Morton's salt makes, Morton's salt makes that is half NACI table salt and half potassium salt and it's called light salt. If that is what your grocery store has, simply use one teaspoon of the light salt in place of the table salt and potassium salt. The doctor says, have small children start with one tablespoon every five to ten minutes, which is usually quite well tolerated. That's if they're throwing up and stuff. The amount can be, be increased every 30 to 60 minutes, two tablespoons to three tablespoons, a teaspoon, excuse me, to two tablespoons, etc., every five to ten minutes. So basically, you don't just have them drink a whole glass of it, okay? You, you give them a little bit. Five, ten minutes, you get more. And you just basically spoon feed it to them, okay? Let's see. I have like tons of different stuff. How to make popped wheat sweets. Bread pudding, cowboy cookies, rice pudding, uh, cured ham, pastries. I may make some of these for you guys. Okay. and But I'll do that in the kitchen. So that way you guys can see what I'm talking about. I have been collecting these recipes for a very, very long time. Okay. Uh, now, I'm not going to get in on how to make cheese. Okay. Because I tried that once. <laughs> it was so bad. Oh my God. It was the worst thing I have ever smelled in my entire life. It was horrible. So, we're not going to do the cheese thing. Okay, to make cottage cheese. I just said I wasn't going to do the cheese thing. But this is not like hard cheeses like what I did. You take 12 cups of fresh water, which is 3 quarts. Okay, 6 cups of instant dry milk powder. One to one and a half cups of white vinegar and a half a teaspoon of salt. You heat the water in a very large pot over a low heat. Stir in the milk powder as the water heats. Heat it gently so the milk won't burn. When the milk is very hot, about 120 degrees, stir in about a cup of vinegar. Stir the mixture up gently. Turn off the heat and allow the mixture to sit for about 10 minutes. Don't skip this part. The mixture has to sit for the milk to have a chance to curdle. Now there should be a big clump of white cheese curd 
in the middle of a pool of clear amber liquid. Look at it to make sure. If the liquid is still milky, then you need to add more vinegar to finish curdling the cheese. Add a couple of spoonfuls of vinegar at a time and stir gently. More of the cheese will curdle and clump up. Continue until all of the cheese is curdled and the liquid is clear. This liquid is called whey. The white clumps are called curds. If you have curds and whey, just like Miss Muffet. Now, now the cheese must be rinsed. Line a strainer or colander with cheesecloth or a thin cloth napkin or a clean baby diaper. I don't know how to use that. Um, get the cloth wet with a little water. Carefully pour the big pot of curds and whey into the strainer. Let all of the whey strain off. Run a little cold water over the curds to cool them down and rinse out all of the whey. Squeeze the curds with your fingers to break them up and rinse them thoroughly. Gather up the cloth around the curds. Squeeze it to remove as much of the moisture as you can. This part takes a few minutes. Be patient and squeeze the cloth covered ball until it is quite dry. Now open the cloth and transfer the cheese curds to a bowl or container. You will have between one and one and a quarter pounds of cheese curds or between three or four cups of firmly packed curd. Stir the salt into the curds. Uh, for ricotta, or cottage cheese. The cheese you have now will work as ricotta cheese in lasagna or pretty much anywhere else. <coughs> to turn it into cottage cheese, add a little evaporated milk or yogurt to cream it and stir con to, to combine. You can div divide the mixture in half and make some of each if you want to give them both a try. Um, so that's how you would make cottage cheese. So. On tanning leather, making sauerkraut. Hmm. Soft cheese. I think I'm going I'm to stop right here because this thing's running on long enough. Uh, if you guys have hit the thumbs up, like, comment, subscribe. Uh, you know, hit the bell icon, consider supporting the channel, check out my links down below for a coupon code for an EMP Shield unit, and y'all come back and see me.